Hello YouTube, my guest today is Weird Paul. Weird Paul is a lo-fi musician from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he's also got a really good YouTube channel in which he's got all his music on there, he's got weird VHS videos from when he was a kid. It's a really good, it's a really good channel, he kind of explores the more obscure parts of popular culture, and I've been watching it for quite a while, so I'm very pleased that he came on and agreed to do this. He should be on Skype right now, so let's... Let's get Paul on the line. Can you hear me, Paul? Yes, I can hear you, Dave. There he is, Paul. Th thanks for coming on my show. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. You ready to go on a little journey? Okay, let's do it. All right. So first place we're going to visit, we're going to go and look at the house where you grew up. You ready? Okay. Yep. Let's do it. Whoa, where is this? Where where are, are we in the world, Paul? Where is this? Okay, well, this is in the United States here, uh, in the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, the the area is the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, this is the house that I grew up in uh, when this I was one a kid. Here, yeah? yeah, there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the house I grew up in uh, until I was uh, almost 10 years old. I lived in that house. I spent my childhood there. This is an area uh, that was called Bethel Park. Oh, it still is. It's called Bethel Park. And it is kind of a more affluent area of, of the Pittsburgh area. You know, people who have... Some money tend to live there, but this is actually what I would call the slum of Bethel Park. It's like the, the worst part of, of Bethel Park. So there was a lot of trash all the time, broken glass everywhere. Uh, it's sort of like a city because there's no front yards. You know, there's just a sidewalk. The back, there was nice backyards, but no front yards. Um, I remember when I was young that there was always a lot of noise coming from the house right across the street from ours, loud this music one. late at night. And my parents uh, would call the police sometimes. <laughs> And I didn't find out until last year that uh, the reason for that was somebody was running a bar out of their house right across the street from our house. They were selling drinks, and that's why it was so noisy all the time and everything. It was kind of crazy. Um, oh, my Lord. Crazy neighborhood. Yeah, it was a little crazy. Now we're going to visit the next place, which is your favorite place in the world, Paul. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's see where we are here. Where is this? What am I looking at now? Well, let's see. We're on Hollywood Boulevard here in California. I was just in Hollywood uh, in December, and I, I really loved being there. I felt like I kind of belonged there, you know, and I, I met a lot of, of cool people, met, made some new friends, and I said, you know, I, this is, uh, things are happening here, and people are, are making, people are, creative people are here, you know, and, and I'm nothing but creative. So I was like, this is kind of, this is kind of my place. This is my home away from home. Um, did, did you look at these stars? Did you have a walk down here? I did get to look at the stars. In fact, I got to film a lot of footage uh, of me walking down oh, and really? looking at the stars. And I'm going to be putting that on YouTube soon. So, Do you know when they started doing this? Could it yeah. be possible that some of them are quite obscure now? Yeah, definitely. Not really there were a lot of names. To... The street was covered with tourists as I was walking down. You know, you had to had to fight to get your way down there. And, you know, I came to one point where there's this uh, like... 10 or 15 people standing right in front of me and it was Walt Disney. Yeah. So everybody wanted to get their picture in front of that. But there were lots of actors where I was like, oh, wow, look at this. I got excited and no one, you know, cared. They were just stepping on yeah, the star yeah. as they walked by because it was somebody forgotten that no one else remembered. So. And is there something you especially like about that? The, uh, the more obscure names? Yeah, definitely. I I've always been into obscure stuff. I, I, I like to bring obscurity to the level, you know, up to, to a level where people can see it. So that's something I do on my YouTube channel and on all my social media, you know. I try to show people stuff that they probably haven't ever seen or maybe they did see but don't remember it anymore. So yeah, yeah. I love that. But there's something, there's something slightly tragic about that as well, though, isn't there? Like, or something at least sad about that, these names that get, get forgotten. It is sad. Yeah, they were it is sad. They were, then... they, yeah, they were the top, you know, star of their time. They were on top of the world. You know, they were written about in magazines, you know, all the time. They were on the front cover, and now they're just no, they're nobody, you know. But that's history. It just keeps yeah. going on. Now we're going to take a look at your least favorite place in the world. Oh boy. <laughs> You sound, you sound not too excited about this. <laughs> I'm not Let's... I'm not enthusiastic about that. I'm going back there. I'm going back there again. <laughs> Let's have a look. Where is this pool? 
Oh boy. Well, that's my middle school, Neil Armstrong Middle School, named after famous American astronaut. Once I hit middle school and then high school, I couldn't stand being in school anymore. And a big part of it was that I was kind of ostracized. The other kids didn't really understand me. I got bullied a lot. Uh, I was friendless a lot of the time. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, that was, it's not a good environment for, for somebody who's, who's trying to grow up, you know, my reading class, this, there was every day I'd come in with a new pencil and the same kid would break it at the beginning of the class every day. You know? oh my so God. that's the kind of thing that you just like, ah, uh, just, I want to go, I want to stay home. <laughs> and did that have, did that have like reper repercussions later on in your life? Did that take you a while to, yeah, to go over definitely. That? Yeah. I mean, I started to kind of, uh, uh, close up, you know, I, I, I started to become very shy, you know, I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't, you know, and once I got out of school, I was the same way. I, I would, I would, it would be hard for me to have conversations. I was very awkward socially, you know, uh, it was just very difficult. It took me a long, a long part of my life to, to try to get through that, try to, to be, be a better person after that. Now we're going to visit the next place, which is a place with a happy memory. Oh, yes. This looks like the, uh, the mall. The mall. I can't, with my accent, it doesn't sound right. You have to say, <laughs> like, the mall. The mall. This is uh, Village Square Mall. I used to walk down here all the time. Uh, and it's changed a lot. They're the same stores are not there now. You know, that's not, not as interesting. Uh, but when I was a teenager... Uh, I'd go in there all the time, and one thing they had was the video game arcade, which I spent a lot of time at. Uh, there was the Village Newsstand, where they had all the magazines and comic books. I remember I bought a book there called How to Win at Donkey Kong, and then I took it up to the arcade <laughs> right afterwards. There was also the bookstore, you know, and I loved going in there with all the Dungeons and Dragons books and, and looking at all that kind of stuff, and the toy store, of course, which was still really exciting. Uh, for a teenager, even back then. Uh, but all these things, I mean, the the computer games, the uh, the fantasy stuff, is that, so was that a, an escape from the tough time you were having at, at school, do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, you know, that was uh, all I was interested in. And now, still all I'm interested in, honestly, is is being creative and, you know, but it sounds like the the way in which you are creative is very much it's still involving consuming popular culture, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, that's uh, what I've always been interested in. So, and there's definitely a lot of other people that are interested in it too. That's what I found out. You know, since I started doing YouTube, I found out when I started YouTube that people really were interested in hearing me talk about what I knew about pop culture because a lot of it is kind of been swept under the rug of that early stuff. Yeah. You know, that's the thing about the internet now is that anything that happens, it's online right away. Any new products that come out, people make a review on YouTube right away. We didn't do that in the eighties. So all that stuff's kind of forgotten. You can't just go and Google it. You know, it's not, not there. Now we're going to go to the next place, which is a place with a sad memory. Okay. Oh, boy. What's this, Paul? And what, what am I looking at here? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Well, that's the house that I moved into, actually an apartment. I moved into an apartment of that house. If you look on the left side of that beige sort of colored house, you'll see there's a, a tower. Oh, yeah. Sort of looking thing there. That's I lived right there. And, and that was right after I moved uh, out of out of home. Uh, I got married in 1991 and I moved into that apartment with my wife and it was, it was just kind of hard adapting. It was really hard for me to adapt. I got really depressed. Uh, my marriage didn't work, wasn't working out real well. Uh, we weren't really, we weren't, we weren't really getting along. We were real compatible as it turned out. I think I lived there in that apartment for about, oh, let's see, about six, seven months, I think and then moved into the house I live in now. But uh, yeah, it was just a lot of depression living there. A lot of depression, fighting, um, isolation. Wrote a lot of depressing songs. 
didn't make videos anymore. That's one big thing. I didn't have a video camera anymore. So I couldn't do that. So, yeah, not, not a good time in my life. I don't think about that very much. How does it make you feel looking at it now? It makes me sad. I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> All right, we, we can leave here soon. I can tell you, you know, <laughs> Now we're going to go to your next location, Paul, which is okay. where you did your first musical performance. Oh, man. That was a long time ago. Wow. Where is this? This is... Okay, well, that doesn't look anything like it did. <laughs> oh. So it wasn't actually that building. Must be round here. Uh, and honestly, I don't even know if there's a building there anymore. Okay. Uh, but it I haven't a, been it down there. in this area. Yeah, so it's definitely that you... street. You're on the right street and you're, you're like a block... You're within a block away from, from where yeah, it was. Yeah. So how, um, how did you feel when you discovered music as something that you, you wanted to pursue? Uh, well, I think I felt pretty, it, pretty freed up. You know, it felt like uh, I said, it just felt like this is what I'm meant to do. You know, I, I, it felt like I really excel at this. You know, when I first started hearing music, and I realized pretty early on that you didn't have to be Bruce Springsteen or Bono to make music. Anybody can do it. So I was pretty excited uh, to have that as a new creative outlet. You know, after a while, I got a guitar, learned to play it. And it just was very natural, came to me very naturally writing songs. You know, I've been raised on serial commercial jingles and Beatles songs. And uh, just very catchy stuff. It, you know, it's like I said, I think it's the thing I was born to do. Uh, the, the, the talking on YouTube and everything. That's, uh, that's something that I also, I feel like that's my destiny. That's, that's what I, my place in the world. But, but the music thing is the thing that I just have the natural ability for. That, that's my, my God-given talent right there. Now we're going to visit the next place, which is a place with a life-changing moment. Okay. What's this, Paul? What am I looking at here? Leb Let's Lebanon see. shops. You just, oh. really, you just really love shops. Lebanon shops. There it is. Well, that's a, a shopping center, but it's all offices uh, at the top. And uh, I had... Let's see. When was that? 2005. Uh, I started going to a couples counseling uh, counselor there with my girlfriend at that time. Well, what happened was uh, my girlfriend uh, ended up uh, leaving and I kept going to see the counselor anyway. I, I kept going for another year, year and a half, I guess, kept going to see the counselor on my own. And, you know, it, it was really good for, for me. I would never have thought to do something like that by myself, but uh, it ended up helping me so much and I liked it because it wasn't a thing where somebody was saying here's what you need to do do this it'll 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 change everything for you or whatever uh, the counselor said these are the things didn't say that at all she, she said here's a book you might want to read or she'd just say how was your day and I would say something she said well how does that make you feel you know trying to figure out how I could be uh, more confident you know and and accepting myself for who I was and loving myself and being confident in who I was. And those are the things that you need to do to be a good person and also to be a good performer. You know, that, that was a, a big change for me in that I just sort of totally revamped my, uh, you know, my personality and my, my stage presence and all that kind of stuff. You know, and I, I kind of finally figured it all out, how, how it was supposed to work to make it be successful you know instead of just uh, always defeating myself you know always uh being a loser you know and, and never a winner so that was a huge uh life-changing experience for me talking to that counselor now we're going to go to a next place which is your peaceful place paul okay ready for some serenity okay there it is. All right. So what, what is this, Paul? What are we looking at? Well, this is uh, Muir Woods. 
in California. It's uh, in the Bay Area. And I was trying to think of a peaceful place, and I don't really, again, I don't, I don't leave my house all that much, so we can, I was having re- trouble thinking of one. In retrospect, we could have just done this whole episode in your house, couldn't we? We could have. We definitely could have. Peaceful I could have found place, my house, happy every place. Every one of those my memories house. in my house. Uh, but anyway, look at those trees, huh? But uh, I was trying to think of places I'd gone where I felt peaceful, and you know, and... and uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of noise and I just felt good, you know, to be out in, you know, a natural surrounding. And so Muir Woods was one of the one of the first places I thought of. Just they got the oldest uh, redwood trees in the world here, I guess. Yeah, they're so old standing up there. They're just they're beautiful to look at. And, uh, you know, it's just wonderful to, to go over and, and put your hands on them. You know, it's a very nice uh, serene place. So that's your peaceful place. There it is. Now, oh, this is, we've almost finished, you know? That's true. We're, we're almost to the end here. We're already to the end of my life. You, you had fun? The end of your, I hope it's not the end of your life. <laughs> well, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm ready to retire. So. Oh, yeah. Just uh, metaphorically, right? So, metaphorically ha- speaking, how, how yes. have you found it, Paul? It's been—I've had quite a fun time. Yes, absolutely. I've had a lot of fun revisiting all of these places, looking at all these memories, and now, yes, now we're going to visit your final place, and this is in huh? answer to the question: Where would you like to retire? Where would you like to spend your twilight years? Right. So let's have a look. They'll—they'll they'll be here soon. Where are we now? Well, there we are. That's uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. And this is another question I struggled trying to answer. Where would I like to retire? Well, for one thing, I don't think about retiring. But I did go to St. Petersburg, Florida uh, last month. Well, it was in January uh, because my girlfriend and I were celebrating our 10th anniversary. So we took a little trip and I'd never been to St. Petersburg before. before, And it's uh, it was really nice. And, you know, a lot of people retire to Florida. And I found out that's because it's such nice weather, beautiful, sunny, green trees and everything. You know, it looks like somewhere where when you can't get up as much as you used to. <laughs> it seems like it would be a nice place to spend that time. Mm-hmm. I look forward to that someday. Just sitting in a chair and, and looking at the birds. You know, it sounds nice. Someday. A long time. From now. So w- when you said you never think about retiring, is that? I mean, obviously, you're, you're somebody who's been very prolific with your music. You've always made music. Can you yes. ever imagine a time where you would stop making it? Well, I can't really imagine that. And that's why I think I say that I never think about retiring. My uh, creativity is extending to the point now where I just have notebooks filled with all of the ideas I have, all the videos I want to make, uh, all the songs I want to write, all the ideas I have. Art that I haven't even tried doing, like painting, for instance. I would love to try to do that. I've never done it. But I have so many ideas every day for new things. And I just write them all down or, or record them into a tape recorder or what have you because it's more than I could do in one day, in one week, in one month, in one you know. I can't keep up with it all. And so that's why I don't really think about hiring because or think about not doing it my art at some point because I have so much. I have so much still to produce. I have so much to give. I have all these un um these unfulfilled ideas, you know, that I I want to present to the world. So until I get to the point where I'm able to accomplish all of that, I I don't you know, feel the need to think about retiring. Okay, that's it, Paul. It's been really good. Did you have fun? It's been real. I really did enjoy seeing all that, reliving all those memories. That was really fun. It's been really thanks nice. Thanks for ha- having me on. Oh, thanks, thanks for doing it. I've been trying to get you on here for a long time, man. You're one of my my favorite YouTube guys. So it's been an absolute pleasure doing this. Thank you. So, Thank you very much. So now the last thing to do, we just zoom out. 
and say goodbye. I've been Dave Green. He's been Weird Paul. This has been the Street View Interview Show. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again next time.